Hello everybody, welcome to ABC Science. My name is Factually, Contractually and Scientifically Mike and I'm an engineer that breaks down TV shows on the internet. Today we're going to unpack the Australian Teen Mermaid show known iconically as H2O Just Add Water. Now H2O is the classic girl with a secret show and in this case, they're mermaids. I originally watched this show as a kid and I was absolutely obsessed with it. I probably was a little bit too old to be watching it, but it was great anyway. But watching it as an adult, I realized there's a few things that went over my head. So here are five things that you and I missed when watching H2O the first time. What a wave transition. So basically this show is about three girls that become mermaids when water touches their skin, which is obviously a problem for maintaining a normal life because water is literally everywhere. When they go for a swim, bam, mermaid. Have a shower, mermaid. Walk past water sprinklers, mermaid. This is a catastrophe of the highest order. But riddle me this, why no tail when they kiss? Byron, I'm not an ordinary girl. I know that. Where is the tail? Where is the mermaid? Why does she even work at the pool again? She's playing with fire, okay. Now the question here is how dry are these boys' mouths, right? Saliva is like 99% water, water, <laughs> and the rest is protein and salt. So if moisturizer can turn them into mermaids, then spit should as well. Maybe this is why Cleo's dad literally carries Lewis away mid-kiss with Cleo. Lewis, what are you doing? Hey, you, out, now. <laughs> you can't protect me forever. He was insulted by Lewis's dry mouth. Ugh. Here are some other theories on why they don't turn into mermaids upon kissing. Maybe the boys are getting the saliva inside the girls' mouths rather than on them. A popular theory online is that maybe the girls are actually inoculated to the boys' saliva. All their first kisses with a new boy happen when they're in their mermaid form or they're under the full moon spell. And afterwards, when they have human form kisses with the same boy, they don't change. I mean, to be honest, I'm not really sure it matters because as long as the theme song slaps, then I'm okay with it. I'm a couple of years ago, us Australians were getting absolutely dragged on TikTok for the Australian accents in this show. Cleo, be careful the water. Ah. Cleo! <laughs> oh no, Cleo! Oh no, oh no! H2O just add water. But when I watched the show again, I realized that the accents in the show aren't even exaggerated. We literally just sound like that. Mum? Milk? Sure. Yeah, that's so good. Mum? Milk? I feel like that's what I sound like. No, I'm fine. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's so good. How would you even spell that? They just put every possible vowel in there. That's the secret to speaking Australian. It's just add a whole bunch of unnecessary vowels to the end. No. So when I say no, I'm kind of going from an uh to an uh to an oo. Uh. Now I'm not coming for Cleo because I am a Phoebe Tonkin stan, but she probably does have the broadest accent in the show. Moisturizer is mainly water. In English, accents can be divided by how we pronounce the letter R. American, Irish and Scottish accents are mostly rhotic which is when an R comes after a vowel sound and you curl your tongue to pronounce it. Sort of like this, hang on, get in character. Park the car by the water, so good. On the other hand, Australian and most British and Kiwi accents are non-rhotic. Park the car by the water. New York City accents are actually non-rhotic as well. So if you're American and you're dragging us, drag them too. Even though H2O is a fantasy show and it doesn't need to make sense, some of the supernatural themes are actually crazily accurate. And to stage left, the moon. This is left, right? No, you can't get to the full. The full moon is a recurring character and it has some sort of control over the girls. It's originally what turns them into mermaids and each month when it returns, strange things happen. Oh my God, because they're going around the twice. In H2O, the full moon makes the mermaids hungry and thirsty. Brackets, boy obsessed. Byron, I'm over here, Byron. Cool, you got the spa going. How's the water? How's the water? Come over here and I'll show you. Right, right. And that's actually something that scientists see in real marine creatures. One full moon every November, all the coral at the Great Barrier Reef join in on basically the biggest orgy on earth. 
So true. ABC science, right? All the sperm cells and the eggs that are floating around in the water, water, get fertilized. It's huge, it's a big deal. Also, the moon literally controls the rise and fall of our oceans, aka the tides. Think about how far away the moon is, over 300,000 kilometers away, and its gravity is so strong that it can do that. In H2O, the moon is only able to control the girls when they glance at it, which conveniently happens every single month. The moon is literally everywhere in this show. It's reflected in a punch bowl, shining through a window, bouncing off a vase, light fitting, photo frame, glass of water. I mean, at this point, I've basically seen more of the moon in H2O than I have in real life. Cleo. <laughs> and the H2O girls are very bad at keeping their own secret, evidenced by the fact that they talk about it very loudly every day at the Juice Net Cafe. And if it weren't for Lewis, Cleo's best friend turned boyfriend, where would these girls be? Dead. Lewis is pretty much just a great guy. From the moment he finds out about their secret, he covers for them. You have to help me. That outfit. I mean, to be honest, I would probably wear that outfit now. He's rocking the three quarter length pants with the bucket hat, love a bucket hat. The shoes though, mm -mm. Now not only does Lewis risk it all for the girls, he's determined to find the cause of their mermaidness. Science, science is the key that unlocks the door to the mysteries of life. Science is the key that unlocks the door to the mysteries of life. He's so real for that. I mean, you could put that in an article now and be like, yeah, Right, right. He was ahead of his time. But look, admittedly, his scientific pursuits are a little questionable. For example, this time, where he asked the girls for a DNA sample, the glasses slay, to look at their cells under a microscope. <laughs> if you take that out of context of this show, teenage boy steals girls' toenail to do research on it. <laughs> mm. Hilariously, the sample wouldn't actually contain much DNA. The cells in our toenails are dead. Blood would have been much better, but at least he tried. At the end of the day, I don't want to hate on Lewis too much because the girls do that enough. Lewis, we appreciate you and your bucket hat. Without you, the girls' secret would 100% have been exposed. And finally, the clothing. The fashion in this show is quintessential Aussie 2000s. Board shorts with bikini tops, matching PJs, matching flip phone with polyphonic ringtone. It's just excellent. And the award for best outfit overall would definitely go to the Mermaid Tales. They were amazing. Like, they did such a good job with the tails. Like, in my head, this is what mermaids scientifically look like. <laughs> and speaking of the tails, they were more than 12 kilograms each, but 40 kilograms when wet. Each tail is actually covered in 5,000 hand-placed scales, which took two people two days to place. These scales are made of plastic, which is a good artificial version of a real fish scale, which could be made from bones or an enamel-like substance. I guess you could say scales are kind of like fish clothes because they protect them. Their shape and design helps water to flow over fish skin, which reduces drag. And then the scales overlap to give fish more flexibility in their movements. But yeah, the production quality is out of control and it makes me really proud that the show was made in Australia. What a wave transition. And that rounds out our discussion of H2O Just Add Water. All the things we talked about, moon control, accents, the fact that water is literally everywhere. These things from the show help us connect it to real life, which makes it even better to watch the second time round. If you enjoyed this video, and you definitely did, leave us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to ABC Science.